What's up everyone on the internet? Thank you for being this part. I'm so excited to upload this one for you guys because today is Father's Day and I want to do something special for my dad so I thought I'd review two of his favorite movies which are The Godfather Part 1 and The Godfather Part 2. Now my dad's not a typical movie fan. He mostly enjoys on working outside and building things with his two hands and when it comes to movies he'll sort of talk throughout the whole movie and nitpick a few things. However, whenever The Godfather is on TV he'll basically just drop whatever he's doing and will spend the whole day watching Part 1 and Part 2 from beginning to end and even though he's seen those movies a dozen times he's always amazed by the story and characters involved in those movies so to find two movies that he loves so much to the point where he won't even talk at all throughout them I consider those two to be the best movies ever made. Now I would have included The Godfather Part 3, but since it's read on TV, I can't really do a full review on it. But let's just face it, Part 1 and Part 2 just overshadow it. And with that being said, let's talk about The Godfather. So The Godfather was released back in 1972, and right at the start of the movie, you're already introduced to the music, which overall sets the mood and tone for what this movie will be set in. And within the first five minutes of the movie, you just see just how much of a powerful presence Vito Corleone has on people. In recent movies, you have mob bosses introduced to the audience by having them like kill off just some random characters character on screen and that's usually just to show the audience that yeah these people are bad but with Vito Corleone it's different because he is seen as a sleeping lion to where he does not want to see bloodshed but he still has enough of a powerful presence to make people afraid of him and I love that how as you watch the movie you see that how the power has clouded two of his son's minds except for his youngest son Michael who at first didn't want to be a part of this life that his father was living in but when things started to go south and Vito Corleone is hospitalized you see how Michael's quick enough to act and you also notice how basically Sonny and Vito act very irrationally during this time of crisis showing the audience that these two are not meant to take Vito's place and as you watch Michael step to the play and save his father's life you also notice that he He's taking his first steps down a very dark path. And this leads to one of my favorite parts in the first Godfather movie, where you see all the mob bosses gather in one place. And this happens after Sonny's death, and one of the mob bosses is afraid that Vito Corleone will strike back in order to avenge his son. But instead of doing so, he forgoes the vengeance of Sonny, and soon focuses his attention on Michael, to where he tells all the other mob bosses, But I'm a superstitious man, and if some unlucky accident should befall on him, if he's to get shot in the head by a police officer, or if he should hang himself in his jail cell, or if he's even struck by a bolt of lightning, then I'm gonna blame some of the people in this room. And that I do not forgive. Damn, that's such a power move. He basically just said, if anything happens to my favorite son, I'm coming after you guys. And as we get to the end of the first Godfather movie, we see Michael rise to power while also watching Vito step down as Michael soon becomes Don Corleone. Which leads us to the Godfather part two, which picks up after we left off from the first movie. And as we see Michael become more fearful with his power, we also get to see Vito's backstory. And we get to learn how this young orphan boy became the Godfather. And while I love seeing the flashbacks of young Vito Corleone, it does harm interfere with the main story because we already know where Vito ends up and we want to see more on how Michael is going to surpass his father. But when you take a step back and look at it you see how both Vito and Michael both take similar paths as they first start off as innocent people caught in the crossfires of the mob to then starting to take their first steps into this crime world. And I love that how despite everything they did at the end of it they justify their actions by saying that they did what they did in order to protect their families. And to me one of their moments in part two is when you see both Vito and Michael sit together on front porch and talk to one another to where you hear Vito reflect on his life and past choices and you hear him say I never wanted this for you I worked my whole life I don't apologize to take care of my family and I refuse to be a fool dancing on a string held by big shots I don't apologize that's my life but I thought that that when it was your time that you would be the one to hold the string Senator Corleone Governor Corleone or something well there wasn't enough time Michael wasn't enough time. Honestly, I love that how what Vito's basically saying is that he knew that Michael had potential. He knew that his son was meant for great things and that he didn't want Michael to end up just like him. And after watching this scene, it reminded me of a conversation I had with my dad to where we were talking about how I wanted to major in computer engineering instead of environmental engineering because I wanted to be more just like my dad. And my dad doesn't quote movies that often, but he actually quoted this scene. At the end of our conversation, he said, I never wanted this for you. I always thought that you would be the one to hold the strings. Senator Arvizu, Governor Arvizu or something. Honestly, that was one of my favorite moments I ever had with my dad because in that moment, my dad was just as big as a movie nerd as me. Anyway, with that being said, over the past few years, I have grown to love watching the Godfather movies with my dad because at first I was like, this is boring, there's too much talking, not enough shooting. But now, as an adult, I really love watching this story of a son following in his father's footsteps and surpassing everyone's doubts. So before I wrap this video up, I want to take this moment to give a shout out to my dad and say, Dad, I love you. I'm so thankful for all the hard work you've done for our family. 
You inspire me to be a better man every day. I love you so very much. This video is for you. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Happy Father's Day. I hope you enjoy this day spending it with your dad. I will see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye-bye.